four. Hello, and welcome to this episode of the CCR Student Entrepreneurship Series, where we talk to real-life entrepreneurs about their journey and how they started their business. I'm the show's lead podcast host, Vanessa Tran, and I'm here with my co-host, Iman Hanzo. Today, we are joined by our special guest, Lisa Kaplan, the CEO of Kaplan Law Group. Before we start our interview, remember to take control of your future. Join the California Army National Guard and serve your community during local and state emergencies. You'll learn marketable skills, earn a paycheck, and get money for school. Contact Sergeant Aquino today at 916-233-7625. Okay. So to start us off, um, Lisa, can you tell us about your business and what you did to start this business? Absolutely. So I uh, graduated from McGeorge School of Law in 2000. So I've been an attorney for 19 years. Go figure. Um, And I first started going in and working at the Capitol. So I became an attorney because I like the thought of you can't know every sector of the law. And then what I found intriguing was there's the law, which most attorneys interpret, but then there's the creating of the law, which the legislature does. And so I worked in the Capitol for almost five years, uh, then was a lobbyist for a while. And I found having a law degree, I looked at things differently. Because when language was being proposed, I would say, well, as an attorney, if that becomes law, that's not what you're intending. So we should change things. And um, I went out on my own the first time in 2007 and failed miserably, straight up. I uh, thought I knew how to run a business. Um, I'd had no skills in running a business. I didn't know how to market. Um, Yeah, I was an attorney and I got some random clients, but I didn't do a good job. Um, So I consider that a a failure, uh, but a good failure because I learned from my mistakes um, Then I actually got an appointment um, to the state allocation board where I was the assistant executive officer in helping form policy and create regulations for school construction and how, um, so this lovely school, Intercom, uh, what happens with the state is uh, locals pass a bond for facilities and then you get money from the state to help cover the cost. So it was helping districts up and down the state qualify for uh, their state funding. And then I realized, um, I liked the thought of running my own business again. And so after a couple of years, I formed Kaplan Law Group in 2011. And I took the experiences I had from the first time when I failed uh, to learn how to network, how to um, trust what I know, and be um, more confident in approaching people and marketing and saying, you need my services because... So I have run my own firm since 2011. Okay, so um, seeing that you went further in opening a business, what steps did you take to learn about business and entrepreneurship and how to have that law? So um, the first time I went around, I used the advice of somebody else Mm -hmm. um, and then realized um, I did not do my own due diligence because I trusted somebody else. And then I also realized when you form a partnership, it is almost like getting married because you have to talk, you have to agree, what's the direction, Um, and I didn't realize that the first time around. So in 2011, by then, I had read books, gone on the internet, read things, how do you create your own business, because just because you're an attorney doesn't mean you know it all. So I did, like, what any good entrepreneur or attorney would do, I read, um, you know, how do you start a business, what kind of business, do you want a corporation, do you want an LLC, you know, um, what is it that you want? Talk to people in the field, um, then created my own uh, business um, and went about marketing, um, creating my logo. You know, um, I'm a solo practitioner and I don't want to be huge. So I don't really have like a website. I am and have developed a firm that is kind of like a word of mouth. So people in the industry hear about me and call me saying I need your services. Nice. So earlier you said that um, you learned um, how important networking is. So, to you, uh, how important is really how important is networking? And what have you done to learn how to network more? So, um, you have to first think when you create a business, who do you want to be? What is your mission? You know, what do you want to stand for? And for me, it's really important that um, when people hire me, one, they know I'm good. Two, I like representing the underdog. And three, I'm a nice person, but when uh, you hire me, I'm a little bit of a pit bull. 
My job is to get done what you need to get done. But what I took in creating my business was the blend of politics um, and being in the legislature. So I represent clients, um, school districts, architects, construction companies, engineers, in and around school construction. And how do you interpret state law? How do you write contracts? So what I did is it's important for me to network in that industry. So while I am an attorney, it isn't necessarily as important for me to network with fellow attorneys because I don't, I don't need their business. Um, I need the business of, so I network with those that fellow school districts or, um, you know, those are in the construction field that build schools or architects that design or energy um, modulars. So I network in that, and that's really important because it all comes down to relationships. That's a, that's a lesson I learned from the first time I failed. I assume too much in relationships instead of taking the time to build the relationships a little bit more so that they knew me personally. I can tell you I have a couple of my clients that I've had since 2011. I consider them friends. Like I know them personally. Like I like them. And for me, um, when I talk about what's your vision and mission in starting a business, um, it aligns with networking because I only wanted to be with people I care about. Like, it, life is short. I don't want to deal with clients that I don't like. Yeah. So network, and then and then when you network, you create relationships. So you know if somebody is referring somebody to you, do you like that person? Do you think that they're actually going to refer somebody you want as a client? And that's where relationships matter. So um, being a woman in the definitely hard so what would you say um the challenge what challenges have you um have you faced as a woman uh, as a woman owned business in a mostly male field i'm too woman <laughs> i'm too opinionated um have you ever heard somebody say to a male colleague or a friend your boss is an idiot no they only say that to girls yeah. to put us in our place i have two young girls um and it's something i taught my husband we don't we don't call them bossy. We call them directors because they are directing and they are leading. So I think it goes back to a societal thing. So my challenges have been the inherent biases of inequality, of strong opinion, opinionated females are difficult, are bossy. And that's a subtle way of putting us in our place. And in the legal field and the political field, it is still run by a lot of white men. And you know, I've experienced when I've stood up for myself um, being kind of blackballed in the political field. Um, and that was the first time I went out on my own as business and failed. Um, but it's the, it takes a lot. Like, you get sad, you get a little depressed, but it's the, I learned to harness the fire of somebody saying I was difficult or I was bossy, of like, watch me win. I can tell you um, early on when I created my, my, uh, Career the second time around, I represented um, a small firefighters union um, in a, cent a city in the Central Valley, and it was run. The, the city was run by a fair amount of white men, and the uh, city attorney was a white man who used to tell me, "I didn't know the law, and I didn't know what was right." But every time we had an issue, we won. So I learned to unfortunately bite my tongue. I let him pretend that he knew more than I, and then I just kicked his ass. You know, so it's, but it's hard. I don't know the skills of what it would take to say teach you. When you have that negative, to harness it in a positive because we're, we're not equal. There isn't equality. Um, there still are challenges, but I don't want to give up, and I feel like it's my, I owe it to you and this next generation upcoming, be it a woman or others who experience um, bias, to continue to fight for you guys, you guys don't have to fight as hard as I did. Mm -hmm. Nice. So it's apparent that you have a lot of experience in this field and business itself. So what advice would you give from your experiences to people hoping to follow in your footsteps and open up a business? So um, take the time to think about who you are and what you want to be. What do you want to embody? You know, um, so I, I dressed up for you guys. 90% of the time I'm in my yoga pants and t-shirt and running my business out of my house on my kitchen table. So, so you have to think, what do you want? 
Like, I don't mind dressing up every now and then. I go see my clients every now and then. Um, so first, it's know what you want before you start. Like, I wanted to have the flexibility of a business. I get a free go- I took my daughter to school this morning. I get to pick both of them up. I get to hang out with them, like, starting from 4 o'clock. So I work 30 hours a week. I make a really good living. But I work my butt off to get here. Like, I work really hard saying, what experience do I need to know? So, one, who do you want to be? What makes you happy? How do you design a mission and vision of what you want to do? And then network and go to places because you have to put yourself out there. It's scary. And don't be afraid to fail. It's okay that you fail. fail. Failure is actually a good thing because then you learn and you don't make that same mistake. But it's important to write it down. And who do you want to be? And how do you want to do it? And then find like-minded people because then it comes. After my first year, I have not had to market. Every time I finish something with a client, I'm like, maybe I should find something else. All of a sudden, ding, I get a call. Hey, I heard you did this. Could you do this for us? Mm -hmm. So I've created a niche, and it's important. One, I want people to know my word is always good. Two, I follow up. Three, I accomplish what I set out to do. And if I've made a mistake, which I've done, I own it. Okay, so if there's any listeners um, will, um, hoping to ask any questions uh, after this, uh, how can they reach you? So you can reach me. Um, it's really easy because I am also one of your elected officials here uh, in Natomas. And I'll take it, um, realize I got elected at 27. Single female, no kids but I believe in kids. I believe in education. So um, you could Google and find me. Uh, My email is my last name, Kaplan, K-A-P-L-A-N, number four, kids, K-I-D-S, at gmail.com. And uh, I love texts, 916-996-1474. But uh, I want to sign off by thanking you, Amon, and you, Vanessa. I am hopeful for this next generation of kids. Um, I see your kindness. I see your inclusion inclusion of everybody. Um, and I think the world will be a better place as you guys grow up and go into college and um, start telling people what to do. So I look forward to you guys being the next leaders that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you for coming here today.